James has been flying in airplanes for many days now. He learns to fly, not through the air, but through the sea. But now, finally, and not to fly, but to sail. He has arrived, he is here, he has made it. But where has he gone? The United States of America, what a beautiful place. I'll tell you what happened to me just now. I tried to, so I woke up and it was, it's like 1 a.m., just before 1 a.m., and I was very hungry. So I, I looked up、uh, Uber Eats, and there's no Uber Eats, because it, it's, this is a small, smaller town, and so nothing was open on Uber Eats. Maybe there wasn't even anything on Uber Eats, I, I don't really understand. And I, I, I looked up McDonald's, and it said there was a McDonald's open、um, about a mile away, several miles. It was a few, it was a couple of k's away, I think. Anyway, so I walked down to the McDonald's, and it was open, but it was only open as a drive through. Uh, this, this doesn't really happen in Australia. If, if, the, if the drive through is open, there's a nominal non drive through space. It was only a drive through, and I, didn't, I don't have a car. I'm not,、um, I'm not driving over here at the moment. So I,、um, I tried to walk around the drive through, and they just weren't having it.、Uh, I, knocked on the, I knocked on the window. Of the drive through, and the manager inside said, Does anybody know this gentleman? I'm not really able to do the voice. I wasn't going for Southern there, but she said, Does anybody know this gentleman? And the whole team said, No. And she said, You need to move, sir. It's always nice when people call you sir in a hostile manner. You need to move, sir. That is a safety hazard. And I was saying, Could I just, I'm looking to, I haven't eaten. <laughs> I haven't eaten in a long time. You gotta move, sir. There's, there's maybe no one more unpleasant in the whole world than、um, the manager of a McDonald's at unusual hours of the night. So I, I thought, okay, well, how am I going to get food? Because I'm very hungry. I'm very hungry. And I'm frankly fascinated by the thought of an American McDonald's. Will the burgers be just as succulent and small and expensive as they are down under? So I,、um, I tried to order an Uber. I thought I would be able to order an Uber, get in the Uber, and then just have the Uber go round the drive through. And then I would say goodbye to the Uber. So I, I tried to call an Uber, and Uber charged me, and then no Uber came. Hopefully, I get a refund for that, but、uh, I, I couldn't get an Uber. And I thought, well, the, I guess the last option here is standing by the front of the McDonald's, asking if I can get into people's car or just hand them some money. And have them buy some McDonald's、uh, for me. And、um, I look down at myself and I'm, I'm wearing sort of like mint green trousers and a mint green, but not the same green, quite、um, jacket. And, and bright white new sneakers. I bought new sneakers before I came over. And I've got massive, big, dumb hair and a stupid beard. And I thought,、oh, I, I'd look insane,、uh, you know? <laughs> This is, I think, knocking on people's car window at 2 a.m., asking for them to help you with your McDonald's, is.、Um, I can just see that being the start of an article where the headline is、uh, that I've been shot and killed. <laughs> I just don't. And the fact that this McDonald's was next to a, a, a gun shop where you could buy a gun on credit. And I'm not saying that America is a gun crazy, you know. Place. Other people are saying that, but I'm not saying that. But I did just think、um, I, I, currently I'm either s- stuck in an anecdote or a cautionary tale, and I'm not sure which it is. So I, I think I'll just walk back to the place where I'm staying and sleep the hunger off. And there's no shortage of sleep that I could use because yesterday, or two days ago, yesterday, when I first got here to America, I landed at LAX. Which is a funny name for an airport. I wouldn't call it lax because it's very uptight. Anyway, I hopped off the plane at LAX, LAX with a dream in my cardigan. Is that what she says in that song, Miley Cyrus? Hopped off the plane at LAX with a dream in my cardigan? So someone told me that I should go to Venice Beach. My friend Amos, he said, if you go. To LA, and you have a layover, and you're there for a few hours. Go to Venice Beach, it's the nearest place you can go and, and see things. 
so I did. I got in a Uber and um, and a lovely Uber driver who is a he didn't use the word extra, but he's an extra. And he told me about how he's in, he was in Ben Kenobi. He's in the first episode of the Obi-Wan Kenobi show as a man who looks after the royal family on a plane or a spaceship, I, I think they I suspect they're called. And I said, uh, oh, do you, this, are you on the, the Wikipedia? Are you on Wikipedia for Star Wars? And he said, no. But he showed me a, he showed me a picture of him um, in Star Wars, and I thought that was very cool. So he dropped me off at Venice Beach, what I really can only describe as a beach full of schizophrenic people. Like relaxed, happy, schizophrenic people in the most wonderful weather, with big, glorious sand, but like a lot of angry conversations with themselves. I don't think that the beach turns people into unhinged homeless people. I think that's, if, you're, if, you're, if you are a homeless person, I can't imagine a better place in the world to go to than Venice Beach. It was beautiful. It was warm. I walked from Venice Beach to Santa Monica and back again. And this this was like a, a couple of kilometres. I don't know what it is in miles or kilometres. but And I was just dragging my big suitcase and hating myself for not having left my suitcase at the airport somewhere, which I presume is an option. And I'm just clackety, 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 clackety. Just this huge noise walking past. I went past the hotels because I thought, right, I've got to get, I've got to sleep because it's been 20, you know, it's been a full day and I haven't slept. I just went on a plane for 11 hours and I didn't sleep and the stop over and the other plane, I haven't, I haven't slept anyway, let me sleep. So I would go into the hotel and say, do you have a day rate? I want to do a day rate. And the shock with which they looked at me for asking for a day rate, I said, excuse me, sir? And I'd later realise, I think when I say day rate with my accent, it sounds a lot like I'm saying... I want to do a date rape. Can I please have this hotel for a date rape? But I was trying to say, like, can I, I know this is an expensive hotel. I wasn't saying that. And I don't know that anyone ever would. That's really not the way to do it. But I was just trying to, you know, can I give you 50 bucks and then sleep on a bed for, like, just you know, sleep on the floor at this point? Do, do you just have a safe place where I won't get mugged that I can sleep on the floor? Please. No, no one was having it. This is not a, a thing you can do. No one had a day rate. So then I just walked... I thought maybe I could just sleep on the beach and become a schizophrenic in Venice Beach. People are leaving them alone, and they seem to be leaving each other alone. And I do look like a crazy person. Maybe that is the way that I get my rest. But I didn't do that. I, um... What did I do? I got in a... I got in another Uber, and I tried to go to a public library because I thought I'd be able to close my eyes at the public library and at least use their Wi-Fi, because I, I was paying huge amounts for roaming internet at that point. And so I thought, I need to figure out the internet situation. I haven't done this yet. And I looked up the nearest public library to the airport, so it would be fast. And that was in a place called Inglewood, which um, I didn't know this prior to getting there, but it's very black. It's the, it's the most black place I've ever been. Um... I was the only white person at the library uh, <laughs> and at the supermarket. I, th- I walked around Inglewood with my big dumb suitcase then for, uh, I don't know, I spent like four or five hours in Inglewood. I bought some socks. And um, I saw one other white person. And I got to say, it was, I really preferred it to Venice Beach. Inglewood was great. There's a Lovely sense of community. I went to a swap meet, which is like a warehouse full of cages. I don't know how else to describe. And every cage is a shop. I, uh, I, it, the Inglewood Public Library is wonderful. Everybody always talks about like underfunding for inner city communities, which I think is... I think when they say that, they're, they're talking about Inglewood. Um, the Inglewood Library is sensational. I loved it. Everyone was so nice to me. And uh, what did I eat? Did I eat anything? Did I eat something? I don't think I ate there either. I, usually I eat quite a lot and I'm a big fat um, monstrosity. But I don't know that I ate. Anyway, I finally went back to the airport and I got to the airport with... Uh, <laughs> I got to the airport so early I couldn't check in. About uh, 50 minutes of semi-interrupted shut-eye at the airport and I ate there I ate a chicken burger 
Did I eat a chicken burger? I did eat a chicken burger. Not that it's exciting. <laughs> and then I got on a Spirit Airline. And I, I thought I'd be able to sleep on the Spirit Airline to Steubenville. Well, to Pittsburgh, where I flew in. And again, sleep was... I was unable to sleep. The, the chairs didn't go back. And the chairs were very small and very hard. It's a very budgety airline. And then I arrived in Pittsburgh... And Pittsburgh had the most beautiful airport I've ever seen. It was so 90s, colourful, welcoming. I just felt so happy. And I, I ordered donuts and coffee for the lovely man, Mark, who picked me up. He's a writer. And uh, I'd, I'd written to him saying I liked his writing. And he said, hey, you want to stay here when you come and visit Steubenville? Because I wanted to visit Steubenville. And so he's, he's put me up and that's so kind. And he has a podcast, and I went and I did his podcast, the New Polity Good Money podcast. And I don't know if that podcast will ever come out because I hadn't slept in two days and I'd been on many planes and I'm sure I had a terrible smell. That's not why you wouldn't release the podcast. You can't smell me through the podcast. But I think I was... They're really smart people. They're, they're, you know, theologians and econ economists and... And I think I just said insanely stupid things with my mouth hanging open, staring at the walls for like an hour. I, I, I don't remember everything that I said. I, I hope something can be salvaged in the edit there. But I'm pretty sure I was obnoxious and talking over people and talking over them with really incoherent stuff. So I'd like to apologise preemptively to them, Jacob and Mark... And that other lovely man who... What was his name? Hold on, I wrote it down. They had, a, they, had a, they had a lovely man who was pushing the buttons. And I wrote his name down. Hold on, one second. His name was Josiah. I apologise. I hope, I hope it wasn't all bad. I think I'm a better, nicer person in real life. Well, that was in real life, wasn't it? But when I've slept... Although I have just slept, and I also feel like an insane person... As I, I just stood, the food being inside, I had the money to pay for the food at the McDonald's. I was ready to go. Are you still hung up on the McDonald's thing? But everyone is sort of sealed up in their cars, and it felt like a very... Uh, well, it wasn't quite symbolic for the car separating people from society and, and community and connection, uh, because um, that, that was what was happening. Like, they were literally... Like, I, I couldn't talk to and explain. They had their windows up. It was like one degree. I don't know what that is in... America weather, but it was pretty, pretty cold. And I wanted to communicate with them, but they were, you know, they're all they're in their car, and you don't want to knock on people's. Hey, excuse me, oh, I'd like some McDonald's. <laughs> I mean, this seems imprudent, but I will now sleep. Well, will I sleep? Will I do the work that I meant to do on the plane and didn't do, writing about dog anxiety, so that I can afford this insane venture? Oh, just a short addendum. It is the next morning. I have gone for a walk this morning. I got up and I went out of the basement where I'm staying and I saw a beautiful park on the hill. So I, I went up this hill and I walked up this beautiful park in Steubenville, Ohio. The most beautiful, big, tall trees. It's the fall. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Overlooks the whole town. I realized pretty quickly into the walk that it is a graveyard. And, but I've never seen a graveyard so large or opulent. They do things bigger here in America, including death. And it's just so tremendous. I want to do a big shout out before I say anything else to the deceased person or their family who donated the bench that I'm currently sitting on. There's a lot of, a lot of bench donations. Actually, this one might not be a donated bench. No, it doesn't have a name on it. Maybe it was donated and they're just very humble. Uh, I wanted to add this addendum to say that uh, after the McDonald's horror of last night, I did get up this morning, and I did go to that McDonald's, and uh, slightly embarrassed to say this, the I realised the door that I had tried to use last night was broken, so I'm not 100% sure that I actually couldn't get in to the McDonald's, uh, or if that door was broken and I should have used the other door, which was potentially very silly of me. I think it was still closed, but definitely also the door was open. I don't know. Maybe we'll never know. Maybe that's a poem and we'll never know the answer. I ordered a sausage egg McBuff, McMuff. I ordered a 
sausage egg McMuffin for breakfast. I ordered a sausage egg McMuffin for breakfast today. I ordered a sausage egg McMuffin this morning with an orange juice and a, what I call a long black, but here in the States they call it Americano. The coffee was fine. People rag on American coffee. I enjoyed it. The orange juice was way better. Like, no competition. It was delicious. It was, ob I mean, I think it was actually less natural and more pump full of sugar and I'd be shocked if that's just straight oranges out of the squeezer, but man, whatever they're adding, it improves matters dramatically. Perhaps not for the waistline, but the taste buds say thank you very kindly. The cheese on the sausage egg muffin was, it had a zing to it, it had an excitement, and this is what most took me by surprise. The hash brown was bigger. It was a bigger, more opulent hash brown from graves to houses to hash browns. Oh, and now I'm, I'm at the top of this graveyard and the graveyard overlooks a, the high school baseball, as you know, and they're, they're building, a, I think, a new car park for high school, big red baseball. And I just feel like I'm here with all the dead looking on at the baseball. This is America. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to be. I've, I'm so happy to have slept properly since the last time I recorded something and spoke to you. I'm. I miss my family. I miss my community. I love Steubenville, Ohio. I love the people here. They're letting me do a little show for them tonight. I'm, it's a free show because uh, you know whatever the visa. I don't have a visa. I'm a tourist, but I'm volunteering to speak to a room full of people in. Uh, Chesterton and Co. Cigar Bar. Check that out. That will have already happened by the time you listen to this. I just want to say I love you. This is America. I feel good. Get up off of that thing. Papa's got a brand new bag. Baby, we're going to get that catamaran. I'm going to grow. I'm going to know. I'm going to show. Ah, It's up a very big hill in this graveyard as well that I had to walk. I mean, I'm just exhausted. You've never seen such an incline. It's like a mountain walk. And I think it's because you're meant to drive. Like they've built a graveyard that really comfortably you can only get to see your relative if you like drive for a kilometre through. It's an automotive, it's like a drive through a graveyard. And that, you know, that puts you on edge. Ah, it's the alienating. So many positive things to being alienated. So many spooky things. I love you. I miss you. I want you. I need you. Here's a song. Thank you.